Hey, Estelle Rubio in the studio with something new, Doubler 2. So you may have seen Doubler 1, people doing beatboxing with just the microphone. Doubler 2, I'm going to nickname it Mac 2, speed of sound, because writing music is so quick with this. I don't need a keyboard, all I need is a microphone. Any microphone, not a Doubler microphone, you can use any dynamic microphone. And a lot of new features, which I'm going to introduce you to, which go beyond creating beats and melodies. You can even do things like sing chords, how you can attach CC controllers to vowel sounds, A -B -I -B. <laughs> to open and close filters, and yeah, I'm going to run you through some of the features. Let's first of all introduce you to the calibration feature. So basically recommend use a dynamic mic, now you can use any microphone, so I'm just using a dynamic SM58, industry standard. And one of the first things that you have to do is calibrate your microphone to your voice so it kind of recognises you, a bit like kind of Siri training, <laughs> but for doubler. And I'm first of all going to attach my MIDI interface. It recommends you don't use the built-in computer, but you use your MIDI interface. So let's go through that calibration process. Continue. So here we're just going to get the correct input going to get the doubler 2 program working in the best possible way. So you can see here I've got a few options and I'm going to choose my merging Anubis. And you can see also here we've got the buffer size. If you're used to working with Logic, you want a small buffer size when you start writing a song so that when you're recording things like vocals and instruments, you have a really low latency. We're going to set that to 128, which I'll show you some other tips as well, which this seems to run really, really smoothly. So continue. So now I'm just going to sing into the mic. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Oh, a little too loud. Um, you'll be using the input on your interface to attenuate that volume. So I'm just going to bring it down. Perfect. Perfect. Continue. Okay, so now is when we start putting in our voice. <laughs> Try and hit the notes that it tells you to hit. Do, 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 do. So we finished calibrating our device. So we're now ready to communicate with Logic and all of our software instruments. Not just for singers either. I'm going to um, demonstrate some really bad singing just to <laughs> show you that. So if you go to your profile, you'll probably have no profiles, we'll just have create new profile. This is where you save all your settings once you've kind of found some nice way to attach some filters or you found a couple of keys that you're happy singing with. So let's let's get into the magic. I'm gonna skip the drum side of things and really focus on the, the melody and the harmony and the use of chords and how much fun we can have with chords. There's two ways to choose your key. You can either sing in your notes and it will analyze those notes and then give you the key. So if you kind of didn't know music, that's a really great way. So if I was gonna sing, just click here. And also you can hear. we have a little guide. We'll play through a little synth that Doubler has got as part of its interface. And there's a few different choices here that you can choose from the synth preset. And this can be just a good guide, but you can also just turn this off here. And you can see it's coming up with some quite obscure chords and probably you've never even heard of half of these keys. So that's a really good way to kind of learn a little bit as well um, about music. I always think just choosing a key and restricting it. So think, what kind of song do you want to write? Do you want to write a kind of poppy major key song? Do you want to write something a little bit melancholic? So I know exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to restrict to A minor. First thing I'm going to do is choose a sound. I'm going to choose something really orchestral to kind of really show you quite quickly how you can build something really quite symphonic. Now the first thing I'm going to do is switch from the key window, where we've just been choosing the key, into the chords window. So here you can see we've got the chords and then you have to turn that on. And you can see now we've got all the chords in the key of A minor. Quick tip, you may suddenly have a little go like that and realise you can hear kind of all strange sounds happening. That's because by default, the CC dials, which we're going to look at later, are on and we're just going to switch them off by pressing in the center we'll go everything one by one before we'll be coming back to those that's my favorite function of doubler but there's also a mode in logic called low latency mode which really means that when you hit those notes they're going to come at exactly the moment you hit them into the computer so if you hit control on your bar at the top and we're looking for low latency mode and you can see now this little icon has appeared in our top bar and I'm just going to depress that so that it's orange and with low latency mode enabled, we really get the best performance out of Dublin. Back to our chords and have a go. Yeah. 
You can hear I've got a kind of root bass line. I can actually choose to remove that, so I'm just going to take that off for the moment because I'm going to add my own bass later. You'll see as I sing, it'll appear the, the chord, basically. So you can see there where it kind of went off because I didn't quite hit the note. Obviously people would be saying, oh, there's only words for people who can sing the notes, but there's a little trick you can use. So if we go back into doubler here, you can see we've got this stickiness. Now if I put this right up to the top, then it'll stick to the note that you kind of first come in on. This will just help if, you, if you're singing badly. Let's try and record the same thing, singing a little bit off, show you what happens. You can see when I'm kind of going off the note, it's sticking to that chord. Okay, so we've got our nice kind of sweet harmonic sound, but where this really gets fun, and I want to show you how you can use this in kind of today's popular melodic techno, organic house style of music. So I'm going to choose something completely different, and I just love the contrast of what comes out of your mouth. <laughs> From a girl's voice to this. <laughs> So what's really cool here is you can add a pitch bend, but you can really add it to chords and you can kind of add chords to your bass sounds if they're polyphonic, of course. If not, they're not going to work. And I just love that you can create something, you know, really deep and gnarly and techno sounding. So let's add some of these CC controls and really play around with this sound. So let's switch now to the assign. And you can see where we turned off these CC dials and outputs. We're now going to turn them on. So for the moment, let's just take off the pitch bend so you're able to hear exactly what it is that I'm playing around with. Let's switch on first of all this one, which is for the vowel R, and we've obviously got E and ooh, and we've also got R and envelope, which I'll go into later. So we're going to be using the vowel sounds that naturally come from our, our mouths and most things are sung on some kind of vowel. You'll see here we've got a mapping function and we've also got CC control 20. Now, like kind of general MIDI, like we always know that the kick is on kind of C1 on the keyboard. I'm like, I haven't got a keyboard anymore, I don't need one. <laughs> there, are, there are kind of some general rules as well as for CC. So your modulation and pitch are normally CC1 and 2. So, for example, if we switch this to CC1, then we will see on the software instrument I'm using, the legend, but you can see immediately the modulation wheel is, is working. You can see by doing it, and ooh, we're kind of turning off the A. Basically anything other than an A will turn that off. We can also just skip through. Skip over to semi there. You can see it's moving along. You can see here it's actually turning on some of the effects. It's kind of really cool because they're things that I wouldn't normally think about automating or CC controlling and you can actually create some really cool effects. That's quite a quick way to really get started with the CC controls. There's also another way, a more familiar way, where we can use logics. Let's choose good old resonance. Give that a little tweak and then we just go to logic control services and we're going to learn the assignment. And we're actually going to learn key. Tip that I've noticed through using it, just make sure that you close this window once you've set an assignment, because sometimes the sound won't play until... That was pretty crazy, not much control. But as these are called continuous controllers, they're constantly sending messages. So we need to be able to kind of control how much message we send. See, we have these little sliders next to each of our dials, and I'm going to limit the maximum movement. And you can really narrow the point that you want to play around with in the frequencies. 
So anyway, you've heard some noise. Now let's make it musical. I'm gonna add it to the really kind of cool orchestral part that I just recorded. Tip there as well. I've been using consonants to kind of really give that bite to the first note. So when I kind of started out the note, it was like, bing. Starting it out with kind of quite a hard note just gives it that real attack on the beginning. So it's kind of real play with, with vowels and consonants and you end up kind of making some quite strange noises, which can create some happy accidents sometimes. And you can see how in the hyper edit window in Logic, which if you open it up, you can see where all of the continuous control message information, you can see there a hell of a lot of movement. So you can access the information in there. And obviously then if you want to make some tweaks, then you can just move the nodes just like you would with the automation nodes. So let's build up like another section of the track, a little contrast section, show you a few more fun things with chords. And I'm not going to neglect beats and show you some beats and how you can actually use your audio samples as well and trigger those with Doubler using Logic's quick sampler. So I've got a little audio sample of some beats that I want to use. It's a kick, snare, some hats. And I'm going to drag that into quick sampler, optimized. And you can see now I'm just randomly triggering some, <laughs> some hi-hats from that selection. So let's go into Doubler and assign these into kind of proper triggered points to a different section where we train doubler to kind of understand our little drum patterns and this will work as well with the audio samples that you can see the bass drum is on C1 so I'm now triggering the bass drum and I'm going to have sound for that so I'm just going to record some takes of me going boom 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 done I can stop that and so as you can see it's actually just giving me a hi-hat there a C sharp one so I can do this this way as well so C sharp one. You can also tap. And then I'm also going to grab the open hi hat. That one is on A1. So remember, I've got the little tap, so. I'm not doing that with them, I'm just doing a kind of house. So. I'm going to add another sound for a different section of the track, which will build up with the drums we just did. And on this one, I'm going to use the pitch bend. And we've got a new feature, which is the chord pitch bend. And actually kind of slur the pitch on chords while I'm singing it. And I'm going to add some CC controllers and we'll record them all simultaneously. <laughs> and just look at all that information, all of these different continuous controllers. Really just going to build up a few layers, quantize a few things. I'm going to add a couple more beats on this. And with battery, you can do really easy one drops by just dragging onto the trigger point. Another cool sound that I kind of found by accident. <laughs> some more of that gnarly bass to tie the sections together. I get to play around as well with the um, pitch because obviously they sound really different if they're playing at different, different pitches. Remember you've got like the whole scope of like a keyboard as well, not necessarily you don't have to sing like a really high note to hit a high note. So I'll show you where that is. That is here, so you can hear. Ridiculously And then there's when the happy accidents occur, like when you kind of accidentally, you're gonna go and sing, and then you suddenly find you've sung a sound when you're singing the melody. That's how I got this little bit here. 